Today we are diving into David Watts, a classic track by the British mod band The Kinks from their 1967 album Something Else by The Kinks. This story has it all. Sexual deviancy at the time, an inside joke, and... Hi, I'm Andy Fenstermaker, and I've been writing about music since the early 2000s. I've been collecting records since the 1990s. When people ask the Beatles or the Rolling Stones, I tend to push them all back and say, give me the kinks. Released in 1967, David Watts was written by Ray Davies, the Kinks' primary songwriter. But there's a very interesting story behind the opening track to something else. The song paints a picture of the quintessential popular schoolboy, handsome, athletic, admired by all. David Watts represents everything the narrator wishes he could be. Here's where things get interesting. The song's upbeat melody contrasts sharply with the themes of envy and inadequacy. It's a prime example of Ray Davies' knack for rapping social commentary in catchy pop tunes. Musically, David Watts features the Kinks' signature power chords and a driving rhythm. Dave Davies' guitar work and Mick Avery's drumming create an energetic backdrop to Ray's sardonic lyrics. Some music critics have suggested that the song might have homoerotic undertones, given the narrator's intense admiration for David Watts. And that's where things get even more interesting. For the longest time, the history behind this song was a bit of a mystery. That all changed in 1984 with the publication of The Kinks, the official biography, in which biographer John Savage confirmed the homoerotic leanings of the track. David Watts is a real person. He was a concert promoter in Rutland. The song is actually an inside joke between Ray Davies and his brother Dave. Watts was indeed gay and had a bit of an interest in Dave. Let's get into the lyrics. He is so gay and fancy free. All the girls in the neighborhood try to go out with David Watts, but can't succeed. With that revelation, <laughs> these lyrics shed a little bit of a new light on the song. Here's a quote from Ray in Q Magazine from 2016. My brother Dave was in a flamboyant mood, and I could see that David Watts had a crush on him. So I tried to persuade Dave to marry David Watts because he was connected to Rutland Brewery. See, that's how stupid my brain was. I thought, if I can get Dave fixed up with this Watts guy, I'll be set for life and can get all the ale I want. But the song's really about complete envy. It was based on someone else entirely, the head boy at my school. He was captain of the team, all those things. But I can't tell you his real name, as I only spoke to him a few months ago. David Watts remains a fan favorite and a testament to the kink's ability to blend social observation with irresistible melodies. It's a song that makes you think, and it's far from the only track from the kinks with homoerotic leanings. Other tracks like See My Friends have been interpreted by some critics and fans as having homoerotic subtext. And the Kinks played with gender roles in Identity. Lola, their hit song about an encounter with a transgender individual, is a prime example of the band addressing themes of sexual ambiguity, albeit in a somewhat tongue-in-cheek manner. In fact, Lola was one of the first big hits to have an LGBTQ theme. And that was 1970, more than 50 years ago. And if, if, like me, you can't believe that 1970 was over 50 years ago, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button and share this with a friend. Ray Davies, in particular, often incorporated theatrical elements into his performances. This included occasional gender-bending costumes and mannerisms, which was not uncommon in the British rock scene of the 60s and 70s. Dave Davies himself has been open about his experimentation during the sexual revolution with both men and women. You can find more about that in his 1996 memoir, Kink. This includes affairs with the musician and actor Long John Baldry and music producer Michael Aldred. The Kinks emerged during a time when British rock was challenging traditional notions of masculinity. Their music, along with that of contemporaries like David Bowie and Mark Bolan, often blurred gender lines in ways that could be interpreted as homoerotic. I mean, just look at the original cover of Bowie's The Man Who Sold the World. 
In the next video, I will uncover some interesting things about the Kinks 1971 album, Lola vs. Power Man. You'll definitely want to stick around for that one. This has been another episode of Poetic Wax, where I dig into the stories and histories of songs, albums, bands, and more within the record collection I started building in the 1990s. New episodes go live every single week. So like, subscribe, share. Once again, I'm your host, Andy, and I'll see you in the next episode.